Alright, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at equilibrium reactions as well as equilibrium constants, okay? So um, we've started now a new set of videos uh, where we're discussing equilibrium. Okay, so what is equilibrium? Okay, so all chemical reactions are reversible, okay? This is a really important point. All chemical reactions that we have that occur, they are all reversible. So whenever we have a reaction, the reverse of it is always occurring at the same time to some extent. Okay? For some reactions, the degree to which the reverse reaction occurs is really quite large, whilst for others, it's very minute. Okay, so it's very small. We can say that, an, that a system has reached equilibrium when the, when the rate of the reverse reaction is equal to the rate of the forward reaction. Okay? So, the concentration of a species at equilibrium does not actually depend on the starting process. Okay? So sometimes people get confused and think that a system is at equilibrium when the concentrations of the reactants and the products are the same. Okay? That isn't the case. Okay, it's not the concentration of the products that um, of the products and the reactions that matters. It's just the rate of the reaction. Okay, or the rate of the forward and the reverse reactions. All right, so equilibrium is achieved based on the rates of the reaction. Okay. However, at equilibrium, it does hold that the concentrations of the product and the concentrations of the reactants is equal. Uh, do not change, okay, they're constant. So this doesn't mean that the reaction itself has actually stopped, okay. It just means that the reverse and the forward reactions are happening such that there is no change in the concentration of the product and the concentration of the reactants, okay. At a given temp, oh sorry, so now we're going to talk about um, equilibrium constants. Now that we know what equilibrium is, we're going to discuss equilibrium constants. Okay, so at a given temperature, the system will reach a state of the ratio of the products and the ratio of the react, uh, sorry, the ratio of the products and the reactants concentrations has a constant value. Okay, so the ratio, so the, yeah, the concentrations of the products over the concentrations of the reactants is going to equal a constant value. Okay? This constant value is known as the equilibrium constant. Okay. So in general, if we have this reaction here occurring, where we have the small numbers, are uh, the small letters, sorry, representing like the numbering of the reaction. So if we have uh, so for example, if this was 2SO2, the 2 would represent, uh, the 2 would be represented by the A, uh, the small a, while the species of the reactions are represented by the large letters. Okay, so this should make sense. So if we have a reaction like this, then our equilibrium constant will be equal to the concentration of the uh, products, so one of the products, to the power of its multiple, so the number that it's in front of it, times the concentration of the other product, uh, uh, to the power of the number in front of it, all over the concentration of one of the reactants, multiplied by the concentration of the other reactants, okay? So we have the concentration of the product on top, and the concentrations of the reactants on the bottom, okay? So hopefully when you uh, compare these two reactions, you can see what's occurring, okay? And how we would calculate uh, our equilibrium constant. Okay, so if we have a small value for our equilibrium constant, then the equilibrium actually favours the reactants. Okay, so the equilibrium is more to the side um, of the reactants. And this makes sense, okay? The concentration of the reactants is on the bottom, and the larger this is, the smaller the equilibrium constant will become. Okay, so the same actually applies for the reverse. If we have a large value for the equilibrium constant, so that is a value greater than 1, 
So for, when I say small equilibrium constant, I meant a value less than one, and a large equilibrium constant value is one greater than one. Okay, so if we have a greater, uh, an equilibrium constant value greater than one, then the equilibrium actually favours the product. Okay, and this is because logically, if we have a larger value on the top then we have a larger value for the equilibrium constant. Okay? And this all comes down to the fact that in um, our expression for the equilibrium constant, our concentrations of the product is on top and our concentrations of the reactants is on the bottom. Okay. Another point to take in is the fact that the equilibrium constant is fixed and unchanging. Okay? Each kind of reaction will have its own equilibrium constant and this equilibrium constant can only be calculated once the system itself has reached equilibrium. Okay, so let's do an example. All right. Okay, so for this reaction, so let's have a look at the following reaction. So we have uh, 2SO2 plus O2 is in equilibrium with 2SO3. Okay, so this uh, symbol here just means in equilibrium with. Okay. Uh, so for this reaction at equilibrium, we have 0.3 moles per litre of sulphur dioxide, 0.5 moles per litre of oxygen, and 0.4 moles per litre of sulphur trioxide. Okay, so what is the equilibrium constant using these values? Okay, so first up, let's actually write out our, um, our equilibrium constant expression. Okay, so KEQ for this reaction, okay, so it will be uh, the concentration of the product we've got a 2 in front of it, it's going to be to the power of 2 over concentration of the reactants. And again, because that 2 is in, uh, two in front of it, it's to the power of 2. Okay, we'll, you can imagine this, I guess, as, you know, the O2 has a 1 in front of it, so this is to the power of 1. Okay, but we won't write that down. Okay, so this is our um, equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. Okay, so let's now work it out. Let's put the numbers in. Okay, so this is equal to, we have 0.4 moles of SO3, oh sorry, moles per litre of SO3, times 0.5 moles per litre of O2, multiplied by 0.3 moles to the power of 2 of sulphur dioxide. Okay, and if we throw that all into our calculator, we find that that's equal to 3.56. Okay, and that is your equilibrium constant. All right. That's how you work it out. Really simple, really straightforward. Okay. Something to note is that when you are um, calculating these reactions, it's really important that you note that the concentrations are given in moles per litre. Okay? So the concentrations must that you're given must be given in moles per litre. You may... Oh, which, which is... Cap, which is um, expressed by that capital M that you've seen, okay? What happens sometimes as well is that sometimes you can be given um, the number of moles of the gas and the volume of the system, okay? So when this happens, you just have to ensure that you uh, convert it into moles per litre, okay? So let's do a quick example of this, okay? So if you have four moles in two litres, what is the concentration of the solution? Okay, it's really straightforward. Okay, so we've got four moles in two litres. We want to calculate it in moles per litre. Okay, so we have four moles over two litres and we get two, so four divided by two, moles per litre, which is just equal to two molar. Okay, so this is our um, concentration of the solution. Okay, all right, so that's it for this video. Thank you. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.